Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. All eyes on the front. Thumbs up if you can hear me. Great. I want to read from Psalm 107. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love, his love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Those he redeemed from the hand of the foe. Those he gathered from the lands, from the east, from the west, and from north and south. Some wandered in the desert wastelands, finding no way to a city where they could settle. They were hungry and thirsty, and their lives ebbed away. And they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way to a city, to a city where they could settle. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. One, two, three, four. Won't you stand? Come, let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Oh, hero. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You freed every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. been faithful through every storm. You'll be faithful forevermore. You have done great things. And I know you will do it again. Your promise is yes and amen. You will do great things. You will do great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh, God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Above it all. Hallelujah, God. Unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. Hallelujah, God. Above it all. Hallelujah, God. Unshakable, hallelujah, you have done great things, you've done great things. O oh, hero of heaven, who conquered the grave, you free every captive and break every chain. Oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, 
You have done great things, O oh God. God. You have done great things, O oh God. You have done great things. The psalm goes on, some, some, not all, but some. Some sat in darkness, in utter darkness. Prisoners suffering in iron chains because they rebelled against God's commands and despised the plans of the Most High. So, so he subjected them to bitter labor. They stumbled and there was no one to help. And they cried, they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He brought them out. He brought them out of darkness, the utter darkness, as some of you are sitting in, and broke away their chains. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. For he breaks down the gates of bronze and cuts through the bars of iron. In that verse, I just want to speak the name of Jesus over anxiety and all anxiety and fears to every soul held captive by depression. That deep darkness, I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus Over every heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is power Your name is healing Your name is life Break every stronghold, break through the shadows, burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus, over fear and all anxiety. Every soul held captive by depression, I speak Jesus. Again, I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety. To every soul held captive by depression. I speak Jesus Your name is power Your name is healing Your name is I Break every stronghold Shine through the shadows Burn like a fire Your name is power Your name is power Your name is healing Your name is I Break every song Shine through the shadow Burn like a fire Shout 
Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountain. Jesus in the street. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus from my fair. I speak the holy name of Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my fam, I speak the holy name of Jesus. One last time. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name of Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your Strong road, shine through the shadow, burn like a fire. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Make every strong road shine through the shadow. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. God, you cannot be compared. Father, you are good. Ya 
기 할렐루야 되나요 아기가 Let's sing that again. We went to the Baba, Mama Taifa. We not in the Mambo, yeah, Jabu. We not kidding, hallelujah, Tendayo. Hakika, we went in the Mahakika. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, like all of us, at some point or another. And he saved them. He saved them from their distress. He didn't have to, but he did. He sent out his word and healed them. He rescued them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. Let them th sacrifice thank offerings and tell of his works with songs of joy. <clears throat> That our last darkness, the hope that's in the blood, this future grace that's mine today, that Jesus Christ has won. So I can face tomorrow, tomorrow's in your hands, and all I need you will provide. Just like you always have I'm fighting a battle You already won No matter what comes my way I will overcome Don't know what you're doing But I know what you've done I'm fighting the battle you've already won. Oh, 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 and for today and when it's gone I know you're not you are my hope and stay and when the sea is raging your spirit is my help 
fix my eyes on Jesus Christ and say that it is well. I know that it is well. I'm fighting your battle. You've already won. No matter what comes my way, I will overcome. Don't know what you're doing, but know what you've done. I'm fighting a battle you've already won. Oh, 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 You're my Savior, my defense No more fear in life or death I know how the story ends We will be with you again You're my Savior, my no more fear in life or death. I know how the story ends. I'm fighting, I'm fighting a battle. You've already won. No matter what comes out, don't know you do it, but I know what you've done, I'm fighting the battle, you've already won, oh. Give thanks to him in song. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes? Okay, good morning. All right, we're going to do, my name is Aaron, and I'm uh, going to lead us through the service uh, and some announcements this morning, but we're going to do a little game test, not so sure. So I want you guys to say hello in a language that maybe is not English to your neighbor. I know, like, Habari Zainu, Bonjour, Salam Alaikum. <laughs> okay, we need to hear some. Uh... Toro, do you know another language? Another hello in another language? Salam Alaikum. Salam Alaikum. We've got some good ones up here, Jerry. Buenos dias. Ooh, nice one. Buenos dias. Very good. Okay. So from the buzz and the fact that I didn't hear everyone say hello or even Sasa. Did anyone say Sasa? I'm learning. No? Oh, come on. I think we have lots of different uh, and a lot of diversity. Uh, and we would, of course, through our diversity, love to welcome our visitors. So if you're a visitor today, we don't want to embarrass you, but please raise your hand. My son is not a visitor. You are also not a visitor. I know you. Anyways, we have a welcome desk. So if we have visitors in the church, uh, our welcome desk is at the back, and we would welcome you to come and uh, learn more about LVC. We would now take the time to do an offering. So we give an offering at our church to praise and honor God. And you'll see on your seat or the seat beside you, there's a white little slip. 
This is a slip to share prayer requests. And you can actually also drop it in the offering if you uh, want the church to be praying for you. There's an option to put your name, uh, but it also can be anonymous. So please do that. If you don't want to do that, uh, we do ask you not to use the papers, just so we can use them next week. All right, so we have a few announcements. I can do this one first. This one is the prayer. Uh, we do have prayer after the service in the very far uh, back corner. If everyone wants to look back there, in the corner there's a sign that says prayer, and we welcome anyone to join us uh, for prayer uh, during or even after the service. So the announcements we wanted to share today is that there's a baptism service coming up. So repeat with me, March 3rd. Uh, so if you're interested in doing baptism, that's coming up pretty quick, actually. And we do like to uh, encourage people uh, to come to the welcome desk to register. There's a few um, things you need to do before you are baptized at LVC. And we're also doing a baby dedication, March 17th. Do you want to say that with me? March. It's a really busy month for us. Um, so... Uh, as well, go to the welcome desk. So if you want to have your uh, child or baby baptized, we do that here at LVC, and it's a really beautiful time. So go to the welcome desk for that. We have some really exciting announcements coming up for parents, so listen up. Uh, Sunday school is uh, class 8 and 9. Do you want to raise your hand if you're in class 8 or 9? Ooh, nice one. Loa, I see. Very good. We're doing a, a clothing uh, drive for the Joy Children's Home. Uh, so please remember to drop off your items with Sunday School. And we had a few technical details uh, or issues, I guess you could say, with our name tags this morning. So if your child does not have a name tag, as you can see, the church is growing, growing, growing. We have over 100 children, so name tags are actually quite important for Sunday School. So please go to the, uh, the sign-in desk for Sunday School and get them before your child goes to Sunday School. It's quite important that parents pick their children up before or after tea? Nice. Okay, before. It's actually also really important that parents pick their, up, their kids up before tea uh, so the Sunday school teachers can clean up and also join us for some tea. The one announcement I didn't really want to share, but it's really important, is that in Sunday school, there are a few kids that are being dropped and parents then leave church. And it's actually not something that we would like to condone at LVC. We are a family church uh, or a guardian for that matter. You don't have to be the parent of the child that's dropping off. But there does need to be someone on the property that's responsible for a child. That's why we have the name tags. And uh, if this is an issue, please do come to us. We would love to find a way to allow a child to come. But we also want to make sure someone is very responsible for that child uh, during the hour and a half that church is running. All right, I think I'm good. That was okay, kind of long. I know, I'm sorry, it's my first time. <laughs> all right, we're going to pray for the kids. So maybe we'll get all the kids to stand up. Nice, very good. All right, if you're an adult, you can put your hand near a child. Of course, you don't need to touch the child if it's not your child. Uh, but put your hand out and we'll pray for the kids while they go to Sunday school. Okay, dear Lord, we thank you so much for this morning, for LVC and for our kids. We thank you, God, that we're having all these beautiful problems and issues that we're having to deal with. And we wouldn't have these issues, God, if we had no children in our church. So this is really good things. Uh, we pray for them. We pray for their teachers. We pray for their hearts to open and that for them to come to know you in stronger and real ways, God. We pray all these things in your holy and precious name. Amen. Speak, O oh Lord. Speak, O oh Lord, as we come to you to receive the food of your holy word. Take your truth planted deep in us, shape and fashion us in your likeness. That the light of Christ might be seen today In our acts of love and our deeds of faith Speak, 
go, Lord, and fulfill in us all your purposes for your glory. Teach us, Lord, full obedience, holy reverence, through humility. Test our thoughts and our attitudes in the radiance of your purity. Cause our faith to rise cause our eyes to see your majestic love our words of power that can never fail let the truth prevail over Morning, church. Can you hear me? Yes. Could we have the verse? Thank you. My name is Severine, and I'm going to lead us into a prayer of repentance, a prayer for our nation, and a prayer for the world, and finally, a prayer of thanksgiving. And between each section, I will invite you as a church community to declare the verse from Psalm 34 14 that you see on the screen that says, um, Turn from evil. And do good. Seek peace and pursue it as a sign of releasing our prayer to God. Okay? So before we start, I invite you to take a deep breath and commit this time to God. Father, we pray a prayer of repentance today. We may have started the new year with fresh intentions to seek and serve you. And as we enter the fourth week, we probably realize that we are failing in some areas. Our patience might have run out. Our concerns might have crept in. So God, please help us. When we are overwhelmed and tired, show us how to run to you. Give us the strength we need to endure whatever comes our way. Help us to remember that you are always near, that you will always protect and support us. And together we pray, turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. 
Lord, we pray for our nation of Kenya. So many of us are struggling with the increasing cost of living. And we are hurting from news reports of violence against women, human rights abuse, abuse of power by cult leaders or people in position of influence. Lord, we pray for our leaders and institutions that they will seek wisdom, compassion, and justice. And we pray that as a church community, we may carry the message of your hope through our lives. And together we pray, turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Lord, we want to reflect your peace in the world that thrives on conflict. We continue to pray for a ceasefire in Gaza. Bring relief to the families who have been subjected to killings for the past hundred days. Bring an end to the suffering of the Ukrainian people for the past two years and put a stop to the tensions erupting everywhere in the Middle East. God, our world desperately needs your peace. Let our conversations flow with grace and love. Show us how to better live in peace with others and seek goodness. And together we pray, turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. And finally, God, we thank you for revealing yourself to the world and to us. Thank you for choosing to have a personal relationship with us. Your word says, you will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. And so this year, may we as a church make it our priority to seek to know you, discern your ways and obey you in our choices. And as we draw closer to you, please deepen our relationship with you and with one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Right. Um, so let me first read the scripture readings for this morning, and then we will carry on. So the first one is 2 Timothy 2, verse 2. Verse, verse, sorry, verse 1 and 2. You then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And what you have heard of me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. That is our first reading. Our second reading, Matthew 28 from verse 18 to 20. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded. And behold, I am, always, I am with you always to the end of the age. Uh, good morning once again. My name is Victor for those who do not know me. And I serve on staff here at LBC. I have the privilege this morning to bring God's word. As I was reflecting about this message, uh, two things came to mind. The first is that our mission statement is everyone making disciples by 2025. Every member making disciples by 2025. But the second thing that came to my mind is this mental picture of a chain reaction where one initial event and one initial event gives way to another and yet another and another and so on now if you've been in uh, our our roads especially here in Nairobi you know that when one driver starts to overlap what happens soon after another driver follows and another and another and before we know it, we have a long queue where there is no lane that exists. That is a chain reaction. When a loose chunk of snow breaks off and moves down a steep slope, it impacts and picks more snow and debris, eventually creating an avalanche. That is a chain reaction. When a domino piece falls and impacts another, 
and more and more dominant, domino pieces are impacted one after the other, that is a chain reaction. And these are just but a few examples of chain reaction. You might be thinking of a Mexican wave in a stadium. But today, as we carry on with our sermon series of the church, about the church, we will look specifically at this special kind of chain reaction, discipleship. See, Paul says to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2, as we've just read, you then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, the same entrust to faithful men who will also be able to teach others. A chain reaction. We are ever learning from others who point us to Christ and ever pointing others to Christ as we receive the life-changing gospel of God's word, teaching others to obey it. So then, it is important that even as we carry on, that we define who a disciple is. A disciple is a follower of Christ, one who follows in Jesus' steps, doing as Jesus taught, and as he lived, and living as Jesus lived. One who follows in Jesus' steps, doing as Jesus taught, and living as Jesus lived. So then, discipleship can also be described as helping someone, or being helped to follow in Jesus' steps in doing as he taught, and in living as he lived. Helping, or being helped to follow Jesus' steps in doing as he thought, as he taught, and living as he lived. We fit in that equation, both as disciples, learning from Jesus and learning from others who teach us about Christ, and as disciples who teach others to follow Christ. Now, to help us navigate this teaching about discipleship, I will use three points, or three handles, and uh, for some strange reason, I felt like finding words that start with an O. There is nothing inspired about O. So the first point is the origin of discipleship, the organ of discipleship, and the operation of discipleship. Um, I don't know whether it's feedback from here. The origin of discipleship, the organ of discipleship, and the operation of discipleship. So to my first point, the origin. See, church, it may be very easy to understand discipleship merely as, just some, as, an, as an activity, merely as something we just do. But you see, discipleship doesn't start with something we do. Rather, it starts with something Christ did. Discipleship does not start with something we do. It starts with something that Christ did. You see, when we accept the free gift of grace that Christ offers us, by faith in Christ and in his finished work on the cross, we are saved, yes. We are brought into the community of believers, the church, yes. And at the same time, we are ushered into a life of discipleship. So by standards of scripture, the church is a community of disciples of Christ. By standards of scripture. Because that is what believers are, and that is what believers should be. That is what a Christian is. In fact, the first people to be called Christians in Antioch, in Acts chapter 11, verse 26, were the initial disciples. Though the term was meant to be derogatory, it was coined around the idea of a people behaving like and following in the ways of Christ. So even the term Christians has the connotation of following Christ, disciple. So then it makes Christian synonymous and inseparable with disciple. Now, if you remember, for those who were here last week, Pastor Joshua taught that in scripture there was no category of believers that don't belong to a local church. In the same way, there is no category of believers 
as per scripture, that are not disciples. Or rather, there shouldn't be a category of believers that are not disciples. The Christian life is a life of discipleship. So we see that the initial 12 disciples came, became disciples by means of the call of Christ. So we are initiated, one, we are initiated into discipleship when we believe in Christ because of Christ's work. It doesn't start with something we do. You do not become a disciple simply by doing things that look like things a disciple should do, but by being one, by faith in Christ. But also, Christ, by his call to the initial disciples, initiated that, initiated a discipleship relationship with them in Mark chapters 1 and 2 and in Matthew chapter 4, Christ is famously quoted saying, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. They followed him, were his disciples, but they were on their way to being made disciples who disciple, fishers of men. Jesus, after his resurrection, gave to then 11 disciples the Great Commission, and by extension to us, as he called them to go forth in Matthew chapter 28, from verse 18 to 20, which we just read, Christ calls, Christ's call of the disciples was the inaugural call of disciples, and the Great Commission was the official authorized marching orders first for the initial disciples and by extension to all believers to engage in a life of making disciples. Think about it. For those, who are, for those who are familiar with what it means to be in an army, or you must have heard that one must first be enlisted as a qualified soldier, and even then, they cannot fire their arms in a war without the go-ahead to engage given by an authorized, higher-ranking military personnel. Now, I am only familiar with this by means of movies where a fighter jet would be uh, next to an, an unauthorized craft and requesting permission to engage, permission to fire. See, in a much greater way, Jesus, through his disciples, sorry, through the cross, makes us his disciples when we believed, when we are qualified because of his work on the cross, and we are brought into a life of following him. Jesus, who rose victorious and was seated at a place of authority at God's right hand, that same authority is what he invokes in Matthew 28 when he says, all authority has been given me, therefore go. Our marching orders come from Christ. Our permission to engage comes from Christ. We respond to this marching orders, this permission to engage, this go ahead to engage, this great commission. Discipleship is Christ initiated. It is Christ's idea. He is the grand architect. He is the originator. There is no disciple or discipleship in the true sense of what disciple and discipleship means where there isn't first and foremost Christ's redemptive initiation outside of a relationship with him. Well, you can become some kind of disciple. You can become a follower of something or someone else, but you can't call yourself a disciple of Christ outside of Christ. So if you're here and you do not have this relationship with Christ, that not only brings us into a saving relation, into a saving relationship, into a loving community, but also makes us disciples. I invite you to not only talk to the people that have been here, but even believers among us seated there can tell you what it means to believe in Christ and to be a disciple. So that is the origin of our discipleship. Christ is the initiator. And that brings us to our second point, the organ of discipleship. The organ of discipleship. When I say the organ, what I mean is that the, the vehicle 
and in this case, the human agency, and the human agency, the primary human agency of discipleship is the local church. So the organ of discipleship is primarily the local church. The local church is made up of individual believers who have a personal relationship with Christ. And remember, Pastor Joshua mentioned this last Sunday, that Christianity is a personal thing. You have a personal relationship with God, but it is not private. Every believer needs a community of followers of Christ for discipleship to happen. And so discipleship is inseparable from the agency of the local church. Why? It is within the local church that we can be known and that we can know others and commit to covenanting intentionally with one another in a love-motivated concern for each other's spiritual work. Now, this is not to say that you cannot engage in a discipleship relationship with someone outside the local church because we are not called to just be inward-looking. We are also called to be missional. That could be the relationship that God will use to help, to help point that person to Christ. But I hope that as you're doing so, that you will also eventually point them to a good local church where they can grow, not necessarily our local church. But the church is the primary human agency for discipleship. In the New Testament, the church, we see an emphasis of the church being the primary, the primary agency for discipleship. In Titus chapter 2, from verse 3 to 7, older women are urged to teach younger women. Titus is all, um, urged to teach younger men. Older men and Titus himself are urged to teach the younger men to be self-controlled. All are urged to model and exemplify Christ-likeness. All this is happening in the context of a local church. How do we know that? In the initial chapter, there is a list of qualification of elders. That conversation was a conversation within the context of a local church. It is within the local church that this training and teaching can happen because there is regular gathering, can effectively happen because there is regular gathering. Within the local church, we can find the diversity of older, more mature believers and younger believers in the faith. Now, pause. When younger believers want to constantly remain in their own space, it is self-depriving spiritually. I can tell you how many times I have had a massive feast from just a conversation with an older believer in this church and getting to have those converse conversations and getting to hear, oh, wow, this is, this is what was helpful for them in helping them follow Christ and getting insights and being encouraged. It is within the local church. When we isolate ourselves from the local church, we are running from a place where we can be known and cared for, for our own spiritual good. See, verse 7 of Titus chapter 2, that talks about people in the church being an example and a model of good conduct, brings this idea that within a local church, a pattern of God believing can be well identified, observed, and emulated. See, that cannot happen in the context that cannot happen very well in the context where you are not covenanting regularly and intentionally with one another. It is really hard to see a pattern of godly living. Elsewhere in Scripture, Matthew 18, we see the place of a local church in helping one who is living in sin. See, there's first and foremost this one believer that is called to point this brother and show them their sin. Then it gradually progresses into more and more believers coming on board to point them back. And eventually, it further escalates into telling the whole church once those first two steps have, once those steps have failed. See, the conversation there is not... Oopsie. See, this conversation does not happen in the local church, only when the church, the whole church is being told. It is actually within the context of a local church, and it is just progressing and escalating and gradually involving the entire 
church. You see, being in a local church is very much like being in a team. Back in high school, I used to dance. And I know that might be a fun fact. And one of the, one of the dance moves I used to enjoy the most was something we call the break dance. Oh, when we, did, when we did the waves. I don't know how many are familiar with the waves. Uh, I initially thought I would have a line of people here to demonstrate what it means to pass on one wave to another. Then I said, okay, it's fine. I'll just paint the picture. In that move, one person begins a ripple effect, passes it to another, who takes it and passes it yet to another, and to another, and so on and so forth. Being in a local church is like being part of that team. You see, when one person doesn't do their part, it breaks the ripple effect. And you see, you, in and of yourself, cannot create a wave. You cannot create a series of waves. And it's the same thing with us in a local church. We are here to be part of a process of being taught and teaching others who also teach others. We need the local church. So that is the organ of discipleship. The local church. Now, our third point is the operation of discipleship. And this, I need to give a heads up, will be longer than the first two. The operation, the functioning in discipleship. The operation of discipleship. In discipleship, church, there will definitely be a disciple, discipler dynamic. More spiritually mature believers pouring into the lives of other believers. But we must consider this as much as there will be an aspect, or there may be an aspect of spiritual authority, it is not a supremacy issue. It is not a, a a superiority versus inferiority issue. It is when we are called to follow others, we don't follow them with them as the ultimate focus. When we are following people, we are following people as long as they are following Christ. Any mature believer discipling a younger believer is not building himself or herself an army of his or her own loyalists. When we disciple each other, we are asking others to follow Christ, to make Christ the ultimate object of their allegiance and affection. Paul, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, says to the church in Corinth, be imitators of me as I am of Christ. Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. Other versions say, follow me, as I follow Christ. And yet another version says, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. As we disciple, we must also be learning from Christ, personally from his word and from others who faithfully teach it. Do you know the only person in this equation who doesn't need to be taught? Christ. Christ. His word is what we teach in the end, Christ is the ultimate head, is the ultimate object, is the ultimate focus of our discipleship. We are teaching others and are being taught not to obey merely, mere human words, but to obey Christ. Matthew 28, as we read, in the Great Commission, Jesus says to his disciples, how are, they, how are they supposed to make disciples? By teaching them to obey everything that he, who, Jesus, commanded them. See, the command here is very specific. They are not going, or we are not going to come up with something different other than the teaching of Christ. We are not going to teach others to obey us as the ultimate focus, but to obey Christ 
the disciples taught what they were striving towards, not what they were not striving towards. There was no provision, church, for them to become the quintessential focus or object of other believers' obedience and allegiance. Outside of the teachings of Christ, apart from the gospel, outside of the emphasis that Christ is the one we are leading others to, we make our own disciples who are not followers of Christ. And we begin to do harm to the church and even discredit our gospel witness. A recent BBC documentary highlights a famous apostle and televangelist. This particular apostle had his own disciples. In interviews that BBC did with some of his disciples, these were some of the words they had to say, and I quote, he is so powerful, or these are the words they had to say about this, this, this uh, apostle, he is so powerful, more powerful than Satan himself, end of quote. Open another quote. He is second in command to God. Another one said, everything in the church compound rotated around him. Another one said, we all tried to outdo one another to make him happy. See, some of his disciples were his personal servants who ran around his lavish home to cater to his needs. And one said that all was in my mind was where is he now? Has he eaten? Has he taken a bath? Is the shower ready? This preacher was not creating servants and followers of Christ, but creating his own followers with him as the ultimate object and focus. Now, this is not the only example we have around where discipleship happens with a human being as the ultimate focus. Right now in the news, we see what's happening at the coast and people that followed a false teacher and false teachings who are, who are not leading them to Christ but leading them to themselves and self-interest. It is when we are at the center that such things happen. Discipleship that is not centered around Christ is not true discipleship as biblically defined. We must remember church, that we ourselves are reliant, we are contingent creatures, we are reliant on the grace bestowed upon us to be disciples and to be able to disciple others. We are not the end goal. We are not at the epitome of divinity and spirituality. God is. Paul reminds Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2, before he tells him that the things he has heard from him to entrust to others, you know what he first tells him? Be strengthened by the grace that comes from Jesus Christ. It does not start with him. He is not the pinnacle of discipleship. There is no point where we become the end goal. Now, that's one side of an encouragement I need to bring out. The other encouragement is that we can think of ourselves too low and too incapable of doing discipleship. Now, in the police force or in the military, and by the way, if there's anyone here who is in the police force, we appreciate you and we love you. And we are also being protected by policemen out there, ultimately by God, but, right? But we know that in the police force, there are, in the military, there are special forces that are assigned very special tasks. They receive much more specialized training than other forces. In developed countries, we hear of the, uh, of the SEALs or special ops. Here in Kenya, we have what we call the Reke Squad. The Reke Squad is a squad that we send into a building where there's a terror attack. That is the squad that goes in and clears everything in record time. See, unfortunately, church, when it comes to doing God's work, we tend to think of ourselves as ordinary military, and then maybe the clergy are the record squad of discipleship. They are the ones who have more specialized 
uh, grace and they have a, a um, 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 they have Holy Spirit 2.0 upgrade that we do not have. Let me remind us, back to Matthew chapter 28, God promises to the disciples and by extension to us his abiding presence as we do his work. I shall be with you to the very end of the days. The God who calls us to disciple is with us. The Spirit of God who saves us is in us. The very same Spirit who was at work in raising Christ from the dead is at work in us to empower us to disciple. In Acts 1, chapter 8, it is the Spirit of God that strengthened the church to do God's work. It was when the Spirit of God came upon his people that they could be witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the world. If ever you're thinking that you are second tier disciple or discipler, let me encourage you. There is no first tier and second tier Holy Spirit. The same Spirit at work in those you admire as they do discipleship is the same Spirit at work in you if you are a believer. Amen? Amen. And in case you're wondering, so am I really discipling? Let me encourage you also by saying this. I have witnessed discipleship happening in our community. I have witnessed discipleship taking place. You see, discipleship is not only happening when we have a program for every little demography that we have. Yes, in our meetings, in our weekly meetings, discipleship can happen or does happen. But it's also, and even more effectively, happening organically. See, there's a danger in us thinking that we, when we don't create a program for something, or we don't create a program for discipleship, that discipleship can't happen. Discipleship happens when we are teaching our children to share out of love for Christ when you are asking them to, to love others as they love themselves. Discipleship happens when we constantly remind our children that it is rude to leave someone hanging when they are giving them a high five, loving a neighbor as they love themselves. When we are reading the word of God with our children and answering their 10,001 questions about the scripture, why did God actually do this? Why, didn't he not, why did he not do this instead? Discipleship is happening when we are gathering under God's word as a church, as home groups, learning from it and challenging one another. Discipleship is happening when we intentionally, yet organically, and consistently meet for a coffee, a walk in Karura, in each other's homes, to study the word, or sometimes to have a difficult conversation, or encourage someone, but sometimes a difficult conversation about our single lives, our marriages, our parenting, our choice of entertainment, so that Christ is glorified in these areas. Discipleship is happening. Discipleship is like parenting, where we both firmly correct sinful habits and point to the light of God's word, but also applaud godly virtues. You see, sometimes we think that discipleship is all about you're doing wrong, pointing sin, and, and always about pointing what's not going well in the person's life. That is part of it, but can you imagine how discouraging it will be if all we see to talk about is all that's going wrong? Discipleship is kind of like being the coach and the cheering squad at the same time. You see, the coach will panel beat his players and the cheering squad will keep saying, go, that's a score, that's good, keep at it. We will speak truth in the process, firmly to one another. And yes, not means our words about what sin is, but it also involves affirming those walking in the light we cheer our brothers and sisters on when they show the fruit of the Spirit and encourage them to run strong in that same trajectory. Paul did both. Oh, to the Galatians, he was hard. Oh, foolish Galatians. But he also affirms the Corinthians as, as well as corrects them. 
He also affirms the Corinthians. We, as a church, are called to challenge and encourage one another. And this is what following, helping each other follow Christ looks like. Church, and maybe you're wondering, it's too hard. How do I even begin a conversation? How do I even begin to bring this kind of conversation? It is a hard conversation. It is a tough conversation. Please pray about it. Please remember that God is with you. Remember that the Spirit is at work in you to strengthen you. And maybe you're thinking, I don't want it. I don't want anyone to come and have tough conversations with me or, you know, or have conversations with me at all about life. Let me encourage you that we are not meant to do the Christian walk in isolation. The Christian walk is a community project. Yes, it is first and foremost a personal thing, but it is also a community project. God has called us to something that works because he gives us the means. He has called us to discipleship and not left us without the means to do his work. May you be encouraged this morning as you think about this one person or as you're thinking about these two or three people that you could start a relationship with them. May God give you the grace. May God strengthen you. May God give you the wisdom to engage. May he both strengthen you but humble you at the same time to see that at the end, we are not pointing people to ourselves, but we are pointing them to Christ. Let us pray. Dear God, we... We are grateful because it is you who leads us. It is you that we follow. We pray that in the words of this song that your faithful followers we would be for by your hand you lead us. Oh, what a blessed thought. And Lord, we ask for your strength. We ask for your grace. We ask, Lord, that you both remind us how empowered we are by your spirit, but also humble us to not make it about ourselves. Help us to be faithful followers, showing fruit in our lives that we are truly your followers, that our light will so shine before others that we'll see the good deeds and glorify you who is in heaven. And Lord, we pray that even as we embark on this mission of everyone making disciples, may we go with all that in mind. God, you are our strength. Your spirit is with us. Your abiding presence is ever with us. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey. 
this faithful follower I will be for by his hand he leadeth me sometimes in seeds of deepest good sometimes where eden powers blue by water is called for troubled sea still tis cause and that leadeth he leadeth me he leadeth me by his own hands he leadeth me his faithful follower I will be for by his hands he leadeth me Lord I will clasp thy Is my God that leadeth me? He leadeth me, He leadeth me by His own hands. He leadeth me, His faithful follower. I will be for by His hands. You can have your seat. <clears throat> so just as Victor was challenging us to think of one or two people, just close your eyes now and uh, even in the last verse of that song as we think of God leading us. I want you to think of the name of the one or two people that he challenged us. And either under your breath or in your mind and heart, just say that person's name. And we just come together uh, before our Lord and just pray over those people. God, we just bring forward the one or two names that has been represented here, God. And we just pray for those people. We pray that we would have the courage, we would seek after you, God, to find ways to disciple. And that you would allow us to do that this week, today, even, God, whether that's a phone call or a message or a hug after the service. We may be discipling one another, God. There might be names that have come up, and that specific person is sitting here. We just pray, God, that this challenge would be something that you would, as an individual, call us to, but also as the church. We would be here to support one another and find ways to really grow for your glory and honor. 
God, lead us and uh, be with us as we do this, do this this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so we do want to welcome any visitors to come and meet us at LVC. Anyone who's been here, Victor, uh, or any of the staff that you uh, have met today, please come and say hello. We do have the welcome desk, so if you're interested in any of the different activities happening at the church, please do connect. Again, if you're interested in prayer, uh, in the corner over there, we try to keep it a little bit quieter uh, so you can have a special time of prayer with someone from the church. And of course, we do have... Chai and Mandazi. So please have some chai. Pick your kids up first. Uh, but uh, get some chai and Mandazis. Uh, there will always be extra, uh, hopefully, for you if you run quickly and get your kids and then come back. Um, I do want to close with this benediction today. This is from the Common Prayer for Ordinary Radicals. And I'll get you to stand with me. If you do know it, you can join with me. It says, may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you. Actually, you can repeat with me. You might not know it. All right, let's do that again. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you. Wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness. Protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen. Bye, everyone.